We've all heard it before. Camera rigs make you look like a pro. After five years of basically waiting, looking, watching, lurking, checking out all these other YouTube channels. learning about camera rigs and trying to figure out if it was something that I really wanted, I finally got one. Yes, I'm excited about that. But here's the thing. Every video out there talks about how amazing camera rigs are and uh, how cool they are, how cool they look. Check out my rig, check out my rig. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be one of those guys. I'm going to more than likely make one of those videos. So subscribe if you want to see that video in the future. But nobody really tells you the cons of building out your camera. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about everything wrong with camera rigs. Everything that you don't typically hear on YouTube. What's up, everybody? My name is Osiris, and I must say that YouTube is hard. You see, I've been on this YouTube journey for quite some time, but I'm not going to get all the way into that right now because that's probably a story for another day. So I'm here to talk gear. If that's something that you guys are into, Hey, you guys are in the right place. Let's talk about my why for making this camera heavier, bulkier, and potentially even more awkward. And I think my why is simple. Basically, it boils down to convenience, right? One of the big things that I hate is adding a monitor onto my camera. Well, you see, I tend to play around with my settings, my lighting, trying to really get the most aesthetically pleasing picture that I possibly can for YouTube because it interests me. It's fun. I like to go out and create and make things look cool. Whether or not I'm good at that, that's another conversation, but I try, right? And in that trying and that attempting, a lot of times I'm running out of battery. So my biggest reason is, is adding a monitor and I'm tired of having to replace these batteries every 45 minutes while I'm looking at an image on my screen, playing around with an image. And the other thing is I'm tired of cables, wires, dummy batteries. In order to keep this thing running, you know, I went out and got some dummy batteries. That's also hindering as well because you now need to move wires around as you move your camera around your office, your set, your studio. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of cumbersome. So again, my why is pretty simple. So now let's just move on to what's really wrong with breaking out your camera. What could possibly be wrong with this? Well, the first thing that I found to be wrong with rigging out your camera is, is that I didn't realize how expensive rigging out your camera was going to be. Now, it's just a cage and a couple of handles, I'm thinking, and a top handle shouldn't be that expensive. But my goodness, it starts to add up, especially if you decide to add on a map box. Now, you may opt to not add on a map box, but I picked up a map box. I believe I picked it up mainly and primarily for the thoughts and the ideas of going outside and shooting outside. They look cool, too. I'm not going to lie about that. They do look pretty cool, and that did pique my interest. But realistically, I want to go out and test to see if I can remove some glare because I've been out shooting. And I've had a couple scenarios where that glare was problematic. But again, pricing. Every single item is at least $30 to $40. And I can tell you right now that by the time you get through rigging out your, your camera, you're going to be upwards north of probably 500 bucks. In some situations, maybe even 1000 And for those that want those really nice, cool, fancy map boxes, maybe even more. And the second gripe that I have for rigging out your camera is really the weight. Right now, between this lens and the body, I mean, I probably have like two, three, three pounds, maybe four pounds right here. You're going to add a considerable amount of weight because you're now adding on a monitor, probably some side handles, maybe even, I don't know, all the extra cables and a microphone, all those things add a lot of weight. And with weight, it just makes shooting sometimes a little bit more awkward. I guess that could be a pro and a con because now you have to be a little bit more intentional about how you shoot. I know they say the weight is supposed to make things a little bit more stable, but personally, I think it makes things more cumbersome 
And I probably would rather keep my setup a little light, especially if I'm outside running around, running the gunning. But let's get into the third gripe, which is really the biggest one that I believe that I personally have. And it's not one that I've heard anyone speaking about. You're getting your camera rig to make things a little bit more accessible and um, convenient, maybe easy, adding things on so that way you have everything that you need as well as extending, let's say, your battery life so that way you can produce content at a high rate. But you don't really think about how cumbersome this thing becomes. My third major gripe is simple, ergonomics. Ergonomics is everything when you're using your camera. How quickly can you find your settings? So my first gripe as it pertains to ergonomics is gonna be the monitor. Once you have a monitor on your camera rig, the first thing that happens is, is that oftentimes you have to use a dirty feed so that way you can see your camera settings on your monitor. Now, once you do that, the back of your screen goes black. So now you have a black screen and you have to review your settings on your monitor. Well, when that happens, you now need to your, your image is now cropped in because for some reason, I don't know if this is just a Sony problem and I don't know if it's just a user error, but I haven't found a different way. The first thing that happens is your 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 image crops in because it's a dirty feed. So with a seven inch monitor, I'm only getting about five inches of real estate. If you got a five inch monitor, you're probably only getting like three inches of real estate and you, you might as well be back to keeping all your content on the screen that's on the back of the camera. So. To me, that's a pretty big con is that your efficiency and usability and being able to, to, to change and operate your settings, you now have to look at a much bigger screen. And on top of that, another thing that pertains to the screen is you have all these cables coming out of the side of your camera. So that means when you need to turn your screen, you can't do it because the H, the, the, USB-C cable is in the way. And um, if you're in front of the camera, you can't flip your screen around. You have to move the battery out of the way and jiggle some things around. And then maybe you can flip it around. But And then you might have to go back into your settings and turn off your, your um, dirty feed if you want to be able to see your camera settings on your camera. It's, like I said, it gets clumsy. And it's not something that I thought about when building this out. I thought it was going to be better, not worse. And speaking about things really getting in the way, another big issue is by the time you put a V-mount battery on the back of your camera, you have an issue. Well, what's the issue? The issue is, is that all those custom buttons that you took time to set up on the back of your camera, well, now you have to be slow to get to them because there's now a battery in the way. You can get to the side of it a little bit, no problem, but it's a little bit more clumsy to get to the side and to the back of your camera because of that V-mount battery and the plate that's now in the way. Same thing sort of goes to putting the cage on top. I know with my cage on my A7S III, of course I got B-roll on the screen for you guys to look at, but with my A7S III, a lot of times it's hard for me to get in there and change my custom mode dials and get to my C1 button or my C2 buttons. All those things add some ergonomic issues. And um, I don't think they're small issues. They slow you down a little bit when you're, you know, you need to be quick. So I would say that's definitely something else to consider. Another thing is, is that if you decide to go with the map box, you better believe it's going to add a layer of complications to your filming because map box, depending on um, what kind of map box you get, you need to get ND filters for those. Um, those things are not going to just be, um, some of them won't be able to slide into your pocket. You're going to have to go to a backpack or something to get them. The other thing is if you have a map box that takes circular polarizers or circular ND filters. Um, sometimes it's difficult to, to add those on while you're shooting. You're going to have to add them on before you're shooting. Um, so I think that slows you down if you have to change them for any reason. 
it all adds a layer of complications that usually you just don't want when you're in the middle of recording. So my advice is, if you decide to build out your rig, wait until you really know how to use your camera. Don't go buy a camera and then just build it out right away because if you're trying to learn your camera and trying to deal with settings and trying to deal with custom buttons and deal with your rig, it's a whole layer of complications that I just don't believe you want to get yourself into. But I have a question for you guys. And this is a big question. Have you guys ever noticed when you're watching YouTube videos or other YouTubers, a lot of times you find that you see the rigged out cameras with a microphone, but no monitor, or they might have a monitor, but no microphone. You ever wonder why you don't often see both? You see, I wondered that for a long time until I really started building out my rig and or really thinking about building out my rig before I started ordering the pieces and parts because when you're sitting down to order all your pieces and parts, you start thinking to yourself like, all right, I'm gonna need this piece for this. I'm gonna need this piece for that. Where's my microphone gonna go? Where's my camera gonna go? Where's my monitor? I mean, where's my monitor gonna go? And these questions, you know, then you start looking for the pieces and you start looking for the parts and then you're like, oh, I'm gonna need to order this to solve this problem. Well, I think that the reason why you don't see both is because it just makes the rig look pretty big, right? I mean, to, to say that you, you, you have a minimum camera rig, you're going to have to decide is the audio more important or is the camera screen more important? In my case, I believe both are extremely important because it's kind of hard to have a V-mount battery um, that goes into your USB-C port on your camera because now you can't, like I was saying earlier, you can't turn your screen. So it might be better to use a D-tap and take your D-tap into the bottom of the camera. So that way you keep the USB-C port free, giving you the ability to maneuver and pivot your camera. So things like that, those are things you're definitely going to think about. Um, and then maybe you don't have to add the external monitor and instead of the monitor, you keep your microphone on the top handle. So those are different experiments that, you know, I think it's probably going to be worth trying out and worth experimenting with. But again, another layer of complications and another layer of problems, because personally, my rig, I think my rig is pretty big and I'm going to have to try to condense it down and I'm going to try to find out how I can make it more sleek, more tight, more compact. Um, and I think that's going to be challenging, uh, challenging for a couple of reasons. Again, I got to spend more money to do it. And, um, yeah, I think, I guess that's the primary thing is I got to spend more money to do it. So <laughs> getting smaller monitors or whatever to solve so for some of these problems, but yeah. So you guys tell me what issues are you guys having building out your camera rigs and your camera gear? I'm curious to know. I'm not sitting here acting like I got it all figured out because I don't. I'm going through this journey probably just like you guys. I'm probably a few days ahead of some of you guys. Some of you guys might be ahead of me and you guys have some advice on um, different pieces and parts to add to my rig to make it a little bit more simple. Now, if you guys want me to go through my camera rig, all the pieces and parts and why I decided to get them and how much everything costs, um, so you guys could take a look at it for yourselves. Um, again, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button because in the future, I'm going to be breaking all that down for you guys because I, th I think it's going to be important, one, for me to really articulate how much all every everything costs and so on and so forth considerations, as well as I'm going to start considering other pieces of the parts for really making this rig a little bit more what's the word limbo or mobile a little a little more run and gun friendly if you catch my drift and you know what i mean so some of my final thoughts are there's a lot to consider before you run out and get yourself a camera rig in my situation you know i saw all the pros and i somewhat downplayed any of the cons that i had in my head but really honestly i just didn't know until you have everything tangibly in front of you and you get to play with it you have to kind of spend the money like a youtuber could sit down and tell you everything about this and 
you know, and why it's great for them. But until you get it for your own personal uses, you start turning things around and playing with it and and you actually using it. That's when solving these problems really begin, in my opinion. That's when you really start figuring out, oh, I got some problems I got to solve. Yeah, but with all that that I just complained about, you know, the funniest thing is, is that I like my cabin rig. I like, I enjoyed building it out. I enjoyed the process of trying to figure this out. So would I do it all over again? I absolutely would. Um, would I recommend for you to do it? I would say consider how it is that you shoot because you may not need a camera rig or you may not need a camera cage or any of that stuff. You just see it and you th think, oh, how good this thing is going to be. But if it takes away from all those other things that all the Sony engineers thought about of all the great ways they can make this thing light and limbal and smaller and you know, um, more consumer friendly and all those other things are more professional, yada, yada, yada. Just realize that you could be messing up something that I would say was already figured out for you. So not everybody needs to rig out their camera. I'm kind of somewhat of the camp of saying, hey, tuck your elbows in and uh, put on a neck strap and, you know, just be conscious of how you're moving your camera. You don't really need the extra weight of a camera to justify how great of a videographer or photographer that you are, you know, just like just do what you have to do. Um, but if you're a gearhead like me, and you like to get out there and shoot and build things out and see how you can improve the quality of your videos as well as efficiency. Maybe you shoot for longer periods of times. So you need longer batteries. And you got the money and, you know, but you don't need it. And that's the thing I'm trying to say, tell you guys that you don't need it. So hopefully I brought you guys a little bit of a perspective that makes sense and a perspective that maybe you don't really see often on YouTube. And, um, and also gave you guys some food for thought to consider before you guys start spending a bunch of money on camera gear. But if you guys do decide that you guys want to spend some money on camera gear, you know, go for it. You know, obviously it's your choice. Your is your money. You guys do what you guys want to do. Um, but hopefully I can help you guys make a wise decision before you guys jump all the way in. Again, my name is Osias and I truly hope that I gave you guys a solid perspective on rigging out your camera. Until next time, you guys stay blessed and peace.